All right, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about Claude Code. I have been using the Z editor and I use Claude Code embedded into the editor itself. I can make updates or check different things within my, you know, configuration, whether I'm having an issue or debug something or anything, you know, of that of that nature. It's a pretty powerful tool to help you through your development tasks and with your Linux configuration. I've been using it for quite a while now and it's really helped me build my system the way I want it. I just realized that in Claude Code, you can actually create agents now. I don't know when this was actually a thing, but I just found out today. So basically I can CD into my Black Dawn OS project and if I want to open Claude in that project, I just type in Claude and then it'll open Claude in there. And from here, I can just talk to the agent and tell it to do updates or configure something for me or debug something, whatever I want it to do. But I noticed that when you're using it and you have a large task for it to do, sometimes you run into issues with it overloading and running out of, what do you call it? tokens, I think it's called. So for instance, if I go ahead, what is the command? I think it's a uh, context. Right here, it shows how many tokens I have left within this particular conversation. As you can see, I have some agents down here who also have a set of tokens. Each agent has their own individual set of tokens. I can have more actions within, you know, a, a single project. And what I found out today that you can actually run these different agents separately at the same time. So you can have multiple things running, you know, within your project at the same time. So the ones that I ended up creating, so if I go into agents here, you can see I have a QA, Donnie, research, and a project update. And I think I also want to make a debug one. That's one that I have not made yet. But basically the, the QA one, so if I go in here and view agent, I can view an editor. You can see here that this is used for when a new feature has been implemented and I want it to go through and validate and then make sure everything is running correctly. So essentially I wanted to go through and do a NixOS rebuild, but without actually applying it to my system, just to make sure everything is actually working before I do you know, complete rebuild and make sure it's all, you know, functioning. I'll go through and check each of my hosts in there. That way I know that if I do this same rebuild on any of my other systems, then it'll know and make sure it's compatible with those systems as well. And then it will give me some reports for everything. Each of these can create its own MD file to explain or give instructions on what you want it to do. The AI created the actual tool. I just explained what I wanted the agent to do. And then it'll actually make sure that it's, you know, running those things and doing the things that it's supposed to do. And it doesn't do anything outside of that. So you don't have any risk of it, which AI tends to do <laughs> going off and doing whatever it wants and adding different things that you didn't even ask for. So you really could be really specific with it. And I really like that aspect of it. So I made one for QA and then I made one for research. So I made one for research as well. And so that one is basically I want to research or explore a new implementation or new feature that I want to add into my system. So I actually used this one today, trying to find out the best way to install DaVinci Resolve on NixOS if I wanted to use that as my video editing tool. So I was able to do that and I actually ran it. It auto accepted all of the actual commands so I don't have to sit here and click and figure everything out. It was able to go through and give me a comprehensive list of different ways and options on how to actually install it and it actually gives me like, you know, literal like explanation of how to do it, which is just a really nice feature to not have to do all that legwork myself. Mm -hmm. I can just have it research or find out different things. It's all based on my system. As you see, I'm scrolling through here, it's using directories and things from my system. It is making sure that it's compatible and working with everything in my structure. If I'm going to add something, it's not going to interfere or make any issues with something else in my system. You definitely want to have something cohesive and make sure it works across the board. So the research tool is a really good option to have. I do have the project update. This one is more of a nice to have. <laughs> Basically, It'll update my Claude.md, which is the file that Claude reads before it does any actions. I have it update it so it can give it to the most up-to-date you know, modules and like the way my Flake is integrated. It gives the up-to-date changes within 
the system and any new commits that I've made or any changes that I made within the system, it'll, you know, find those and figure that out and then add it and make sure it's up to date. So that way, when I do ask Claude to do an action, it's not using outdated information. It's going to have the most up-to-date information about my system and make sure it's working correctly. And I also have it create outputs of the different conversations that I have, the agents or with Claude itself. That way I can go back and review them. If anything messed up, I can see what was wrong, what went right and all that good stuff. So that's the one I have for the project update. For instance, if you wanted to create a new one, if I wanted to create another one, you can do one for your whole entire system. So that's why you see your home user and then Claude agents, but this one is in the particular project, which is the Blackdown OS. You can be specific with it if you want to or not. You can do manual configuration if you want to actually create this entire tool yourself, or you can do generate with Claude. That's how I got it to generate everything as you see here with a lot more detail and specifics than I would have been able to give just writing this out myself. If I do generate, then I can call this agent debug Donnie. And I want this agent to debug issues when they rise. I want it to run various tests to make sure we can and point the actual issue. Um, so what's nice about this is that essentially this is a <laughs> replacing a like a person on on your team to do these debug things and give you more time back, so you don't have to do it yourself. You can use this for a bunch of different things, whether it's for your business or updating your system or whatever you want to use it for. You can definitely use it for anything you want, but I just use it to help me with my YouTube channel and updating things within my system. And then also I do some project management as well. So it's a great tool to be able to jump into other projects and make sure everything's working as it should, or as the devs say, it, it should be working. <laughs> I can check behind them and make sure everything is working. With this one, I want to run various tests. I'm going to update this one later and, and make sure it's good, but I just want to give you an example. So now it's just going to generate the actual description. All right, so it updated, and then you can give it permissions on what you want it to be able to do. Otherwise, you can just hit continue and then pinpoint what model you want it to use. So I'm going to use that one, and then you can give it a color. I think I have blue, orange, and pink already taken. So let's go with cyan. I can either edit everything or just save it. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So now I have the new debug bounty. If I did want to view this, I'm going to edit over here. Now it has put together a full debug options. If I want to update this, I can, which I probably will. Looking at it, it went pretty in depth, checking if it's a hardware issue, package dependency issue, runtime issue, specific desktop or window manager issue, build failures, which is a big one for me. And it's just going to go through the different phases. This is actually pretty well put out, even though I did put in a bunch of information for it to go through this is actually pretty good for the limited <laughs> amount of information i gave it so yeah so i can go back but what's really nice about this is you can actually have these running simultaneously so if i wanted to have something running in this one and ask if i wanted to have this go through and update my documents and select the agent that i want to do so i can have the project update my docs accordingly so what's nice is I can have this going here and I can turn on accept edits on. So it's automatically accept the edits. And then, you know, I'm using a kitty terminal so I can open up a new window here. And then I can CV back into the project and open up another Claude. Then I can do another one. So I can have it running or either debugging something or planning something. So I do probably want to make a planning one so I can plan out new implementations and things like that. And it can spit out everything for me. So I can start going through another one here and be able to jump back and forth between the two. So this one's just working away, reading the lines, what's not synced, what is synced, what the last option was that I did. And it's going through and just checking everything and then it can update the documents that I have it updating automatically. So I don't have to go through and update all that information myself. Updating docs is very time consuming and nobody really wants to do it. So this is a great way to get that done easier and more efficiently. 
I just kind of wanted to share this because I thought it was a really cool feature that Cloud Code had that I did not know it had in that it could really help with your workflow if that's something you want to use. Or if you're just trying to plan on adding something in your system, you can use it to help you plan it out and give you the steps to do. So that way you can have everything set up efficiently the way you want it to be set up. So if it, please, if you've been enjoying my content, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.